Hello, welcome to High Performance by the Word. I'm your host, Pastor Tope Edun. It was said that successful people have the habit of doing the things failures do not like to do. Sometimes, these same things, not necessarily are liked by successful people, but their disliking is subordinated to the strength of their purpose. Today's episode is on habits, and we'll be talking about some very important facts and fundamentals of habits. Right after the break, we'll be back to continue on today's discussion. Welcome back. We're talking about habits today, and I always enjoy talking about things like this because habits make you it talks about your personality, it talks about how you carry yourself, it talks about the things that you do that have become associated with you. It talks about who you are. And that's why whenever we talk about habits, it's so fundamental and integral to personal success and overall success. And I have no other person to trash out and deal with this topic in today's episode than my beautiful being Dickness Bimbo Uzembe. You're welcome back on set again. Good day, Pastor. Thank you so much. I'm very honored for having me on your show again. You know, I just I just knew that you would be the one to help trash this topic, habits. How important are habits? Okay, and oh, yeah. what are habits? Yes. Um, to start with, um, habits are actually regular tendencies of things that you have imbibed over time that have become a part and parcel of you, and it's actually difficult to break. It could be a bad habit, it could be a good habit. And um, why habits are very, very important in personal effectiveness is because it is what you do that results in what you are able to get. Yes. So even in our families, in our personal lives, on our jobs, in all that we do, the little things that we do every day actually matter because they are the building blocks to the resultant effects of our lives. Because um, your thoughts actually also matter in habits because a man of God will always tell us that everything starts with the mind. Yes in everything that you do, in your business place, on the job, whatever it is, everything starts with the mind. And like you rightly said, it is what you do all the time, and that is the determinant factor between successful people and people that are not successful. If you're not ready to go the whole hog of the particular building blocks of success, then you will not see the resultant effect in what you do. So that is why habits are actually very, very important because they are the day-to-day -day things that we do which results in what we see eventually. Wow. 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 There's, this, there's this saying, very popular saying, which is um, at the beginning you make your habits, but at the end your habits make, make you. you. Yes, yes, so sir. how true is that? Yes, sir. Um, Pastor, talking about habits, you know, um, when we were growing up, the things that happened to us, the conditioning of the environment and all that, in a way, would definitely affect the habits that we grew up with. And then as time goes on, if you are not able to check and ensure that, okay, you're replacing the bad habits with the good ones. At the end of the day, you will find out that you have not been able to get anywhere. For example, maybe someone who has always had difficulty waking up early through his school years, yes. and he was just able to get by. And then you can imagine, he now picks up a job, and he's supposed to resume at 7.30 a.m., <laughs> for example. The first time he gets a warning letter, the second time he gets a warning letter, a caution letter. Or even for someone who has a business, who is running a business, you know, there are certain professionals and business people who are sticklers for time. Yes. And sometimes some of these soft skills are things that people actually use to actually 
rule you out. Maybe they're going to do business with you or yes, not. Yes. So you can imagine a businessman who is supposed to meet someone at, for example, five o'clock. And he gets there five minutes late. I've actually heard a story of a certain businessman who lost a big deal just because of five minutes. Because the person he was going to meet in the hotel was meant to travel out. And yes. he gave him a particular time. And within the space of five minutes, he wasn't there. And that was all. Wow. You know, I also heard about someone um, several years ago who will not even grant you an interview by reason of your sitting position. You know, um, he usually judged and assessed people by the way they sat down. And he felt that if you sat in a certain way, it probably meant that you were not up to anything good. Because, and even now, our man of God will always tell us, when you come for a meeting, sit upright. Yes. Do you understand? Because um, over time, you will have this habit of just sitting anyhow and probably nobody corrected you or uh, someone corrected you, but you didn't um, feel it mattered much and you just continued with that until now it became a habit. You get into anywhere and just sit anyhow. So you can imagine people who never thought sitting position was anything of uh, an importance. Yeah. And all of a sudden you come to see somebody or you come for an interview. Because I was told that he will just walk down the reception, observing the sitting position of everybody. everybody. Then he tells his secretary, call that, that, and that person based on the way they were seated waiting for um, the interview. Thing. So habits are really, really very important and um, building and forming the, the right habits. Um, I've often heard that um, high achievers have certain habits they must cultivate. Um, they must learn to set goals, um, they must um, learn to plan, and all of those things. Can you tell us some um, habits that you okay. think that someone who wants to be a high achiever uh -huh. or a high performance should develop? All right, sir. Thank you very much, Pastor. Yes. Um, there's a scripture that um, comes to mind and I always actually like to meditate on it, Philippians 4, 8, where, past, um, where the Bible actually says whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are just, and all that, think on these things. Okay, if you're going to be a high flyer or a successful person, you have to have a positive attitude to life. And so you, I, that's why I always like to refer to a man of God, because you know, it begins from the mind, yes. your thoughts. Your thoughts lead to your action. Your actions lead to your character. And then your character builds your destiny. Yes. So first and foremost, you have to have a positive outlook to life. The Bible says that we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his, to his purpose. purpose. So from the first step, you already know that whatever it is, it will always work out for your good. And so because you have a positive outlook already to life, you will now want to take things or you want to take steps that will help you in that direction. And secondly, you have to be a determined person. You set a goal and you say, this is what I want to achieve between so, 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 and so, and so, 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 and so period of time. And then you work towards it. Um, Brian Tracy is someone that um, I like to sometimes listen to and read and he, you know, he's a master of goals. Yes. And he will tell you that a goal that is not written down and broken down into timelines and all that is a mere wish. And then our man of God has also told us, he referred to one of the scriptures that said, um, teach us to number our days that yes. we may apply our hearts Some to 90. wisdom. Yes. yes. So you have to also learn, not just to have your goals, but to also plan. And when we are talking about habits, we're not talking about, oh, just planning for a year. It starts from a day. For example, you wake up in the morning, you pray, you meditate on the scriptures, 
and all that. And then you go out. The things that you want to achieve the next day, pastor has taught us, we should put it down from when you are waking up till the end of the day. And as you're able to do this, you're effective on the job. Because, yes. you know, pastor, right now we have so many things that try to get our attention. attention yes. And at the end of the day, you could find out that you have done so much, like I tell some of my colleagues at work, so much efforts, but no work done. No work you done. have not been effective. Calls are coming in. You're trying to check your social media page and all that. So, but you know, you need to plan. If I get to my business place or if I get to work at so, so and so time, okay, from this period to this period, this is when I want to use to check my mails. From this period to this period, this is when, okay, I'm going to respond to a particular set of mails that are coming in. From this period to this period, I'm not going to take any calls or I'm not going to check my social media pages or anything. Then at the end of the day, you'll find out that you have been able to achieve what you have set out to achieve. So some of the habits, like we've talked about, is have a personal or have a good outlook, a positive outlook to life. You should be determined. You should set goals and then also plan your day to ensure that at the end of the day, you are actually effective and then you are successful also. Wow. That, that, that is so beautiful. That is so beautiful. And that means that until you develop the right habits, you can never really be successful. successful. Yes. Wow. Did you hear all of this? Until you develop the right habits, you can never really be successful. And just like Nicholas Bimbo told us now, the successful person doesn't just enter into his day. He plans for his day. Because if you do not plan for your day, your day will plan for you. And de definitely if your day plans for you, that means your day will be in shambles. We'll go on a short break now and when we'll come back. Dickness is going to be telling us some very beautiful things about habits of successful people. Hello and welcome to U.gov. U.gov is all about you and the we'll government. We'll be looking at Nigeria's political party system. I don't even want to know any of them. Yeah, have, uh, of, uh, you need an organizing body that the structure and You are using a lot of your political no, uh, jargons. No, 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 it's cool. That's why we are here. So. We want to be Nigerians. On top of Nigeria Charles. State was an Hello and welcome and it has to this exciting episode and of the Go Up. You know, it's it's Nigerians, Nigerians, your it's grandfather, so my grandfather, it should be taken since we talk about that. Then we have to say, we want to be Nigerians. Welcome from the break. We're talking about habits. Habits are very fundamental to personal effectiveness and overall success. And you can have been born is on the set with me discussing this topic. Um, Dickiness, I, I, I think I would like you to probably outline some very key um, skills and habits that anyone who sincerely wants to be successful, a high flyer and a high performer must cultivate. All right, thank you very much, Pastor. I'll just like to outline them then. It's and all right. Talk about them. It's okay. I'll be referring to um, Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People because I've attended the course before. It was a one-week course and it actually turned my life around and um, I, I saw effectiveness in actually what I do. First, the first one is be proactive. Be proactive. The second one is begin with the end in mind. Third one is put first things first.
Fourth one is think win-win. The fifth one is seek first to understand. Then to be understood. The sixth one is synergize. Seventh one is sharpen the saw. And you know, after these first seven habits, yes. he actually went ahead to write the eighth habit. Yes. The eighth habit talks about finding your voice or find your voice and help others find theirs. So I'll start with the first one. The first one talked about being proactive. Being proactive means you take charge of your life, that whatever is the outcome of my life. I am the architect of my life. And our man of God will always tell us that we should always have the positive mentality and always have the attitude of a winner. And it's something I always remind myself every time that I am the best there is. You know, on the job, in all I do, I remind myself I'm the best there is. So being proactive means, you know, like you rightly said the other time, things are coming to you and happening during the day, but they do not determine what happens to you at the end of the day. You yeah. take charge of your life. Um, there was an example that was given then when I had that training. And for example, it was said that there was a man who woke up in the morning. And as he woke up that morning at the, at the coffee uh, or at the table, while they were having breakfast, the daughter knocked over the teacup. He got stained. At the end of the day, he shouted at the wife. So they already had a misunderstanding. He had to go upstairs to change. By the time he was done changing, he got into traffic. There was a traffic jam. He got to the office. He was late for an appointment, and he got fired. How could he have been able to handle something like this? Someone will think, why don't you call in to say, oh, so, 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 and so happened. What could I have done differently? Or you didn't really have to yell at your wife. Because when we talk about the seven habits of highly effective people, we're not just talking about the jobs that we do. We're not just talking about um, our businesses. We're also talking about our personal relationships. Because all these things actually matter and dovetail into the outcomes that we are able to get. So that is being proactive. You take charge of your life. At the beginning of your day, you speak into your day and declare that the people that are coming into my day today are the people that are meant to be in my day. There was a confession pastor gave us one time that I set in motion the forces of life to attract unto me the men, the materials, the resources, the finances that align with the call of God upon my life. Wow. You know, where I work, sometimes you have the tendency for people to just come in and then at the end of the day, some of the things are frivolous things that maybe someone else could have handled or they could have called and all that. So when I'm starting the day, I speak into my day. I say today, time wasters are not coming my way. Wow. I am effective today. God is bringing me in touch or he's bringing those people that I require to make a success of my day. And, you know, I have that at the back of my mind every day. So that is being proactive. And then begin with the end in mind. What do you seek to achieve? You have to have a personal mission statement for your life. As a Christian, the Bible says that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, and all that. So we begin with the end in mind. What do we seek to achieve in this home? What do we seek to achieve in this church? What do we seek to achieve in this business? So you begin with the end in mind. And so like Pastor is always telling us, it begins with the mind. Yeah. It begins with the mindset. The Bible says, be you transformed by the renewal of, of your, your mind. mind. And so that is where you begin with the end in mind. This is what I seek to achieve. 
you are setting your goals and all that. Put first things first. You talked about that also, Pastor. Planning your day, setting your goals, prioritize. You have to learn to prioritize. In the days in which we are now, I keep saying it, social media is more or less a distraction. Big distraction. So you have to make up your mind. Okay, today, between so so and so time, I am not on social media. I have to be effective because sometimes you find out that you have used so many hours and you have not achieved anything. Chatting on WhatsApp, sending unnecessary messages and all of that, yes. Yes, sir. So for you to be effective, you have to learn to prioritize. Also in that book, Stephen Covey talked about the urgent things that are important, important things, that's the four quadrants of time management. Yes. You need to be able to manage your time. Mm -hmm. It is very, very important for you to be um, an effective person. And then think win-win. You know, Pastor, we said, talking about habits of highly effective people, we're not just talking about our businesses, mm. our jobs, we're talking about personal relationships also. Pastor Chris said something in one of the messages that he has not met someone before that he doesn't love. Yes. And so that has helped me on the job. I, te I'll te I tell my colleagues too, and with time, I found out that even people that know that someone else can actually attend to them. They will say they want to see me. Sometimes I'm not at work. The person will say, I will wait for you. Uh, when are you resuming back from relief and all that? That is because I have made up my mind that I, I want to be able to touch lives. And in that way, I've been able to, you know, preach to people. I've been able to tell them about Christ and all that. And because they always say there's something different about you. And so that is very, very important. Um, when we think win-win, in the place of work, we collaborate with our other colleagues because it is no longer about independence. There's an interdependence on the job That's because true. you cannot do it alone. You are actually not an island. And then seek first to understand, then to be understood. A lot of us are very guilty of this because when people are talking to us, we are listening because we just want to answer back. But yes. we're not listening. We're not analytical in our listening. We're not trying to get what the person is trying to say from the person's point of view. But this is very important if you're going to be effective. Yes. Because we're talking about in the home front, on the job, in our businesses, in our churches, even in our cell groups. You need to be able to understand somebody first. You need to be able to empathize also with other people. Yeah. And then when we talk about synergizing, that is also talking about collaboration. You know, you bring what you have to the table, I bring what I have to the table. Because when you talk about teams, teams are not really about people that every, or, or maybe people who are all of very high IQs. Yes. But together, everyone achieves more. That is the acronym for team. Yes. So when we synergize, we can come together. We can collaborate. You use your own strengths. I use my own strengths. And at the end of the day, the team is seen as a performing team. Yes. Even in the home, the family is seen. The church is seen as one that is performing. And then sharpen the saw. We always have to have time to reflect, you know, um, to re-energize, re-strategize, and all that. So that is why even in churches, there are some times I will say, oh, let's go out together, maybe have a picnic together, or even in the home front. You know, you always have to have that time to reflect, exercise, and all that, because you have to sharpen the soul. Because there are some times that even in the Bible, Jesus Christ also took some time to rest, to reflect and all that. So that is actually very important. And then talking about sharpening the sword, so we as Christians, in the place of the word, we have fellowship with the spirit. We're able to sharpen ourselves, our minds. And so, because the Bible says that Christ has been made unto us wisdom. Yeah. When we sit down, when we meditate on the word of God, we speak forth. He gives us ideas in the place of reflection. Yeah. And then talking about the eighth one, Find your voice and help others find theirs. It talks about, like you told us in one of the episodes, your dominant vector. That is your own significance that you have, that you bring to the table that nobody else can bring. It is actually very, very important yes. in the marketplace, even in the family. So those are actually the habits of highly effective people, some of them wow. anyway, according to Stephen Covey. Wow, that is, that is, just, that is just beautiful. Thank you. That Pastor. is just beautiful. So, um, viewers, 
you heard from the Kines Bimbo, she's helped to do some beautiful analysis on certain habits that those who want to be highly effective, not just in the workplace, but even in life. You've got to master these things. And something she kept saying, many of these things, if not all, begin from the mind. And that's why your mindset is so very key. It's so very important. It will determine whether you end up a success or a failure. Because there are certain people that feel, well, what do I need all of this for? You shall need all of them. You shall need to develop the habit of all of these things and put it into practice. And you'll be amazed. I remember a man of God saying one time, um, when he shared some things with us in a um, certain message, I think um, the um, seven facts of a healthy Christian okay. life. Okay. Yes. And he said, if you will master these things and carry out these things and make these things a habit, in one week, you will be amazed at the difference in your life. And that's the, true, the truth. When you master habits, when you master certain important and fundamental habits, the change and the impact you make is so sudden. And many times our man of God will say, you will begin to ask yourself, why did I not begin to do these things all, the while. all this while? Yeah. Thank you very much, Dick Thank Inez, you very much, Pastor. For coming on the show and sharing these beautiful things with us. Thank you very much, Pastor. I'm looking forward to seeing you next time on this wonderful show. Till we see you again, keep living an effective and a high-performance life. God bless you. Welcome to the Performance Corner. Today I'm going to be talking about the emotional bank account. The emotional bank account. This describes how trust is built in relationships, whether in the workplace or outside of the workplace. Positive behaviors are deposits. Negative behaviors are withdrawals. So every time we act someone else negatively, we are making withdrawals in our emotional bank account. And every time we act towards someone positively, displaying the right um, behavior, we are making deposits. This certainly implies that high balances will mean high levels of tolerance. And low balances on this account will mean very low levels of tolerance. And so we have to be conscious that every time we deal and relate with people, we are making deposits or making withdrawals in our emotional bank accounts. God bless you.